Hi guys, today I'm going to introduce to you about direct shear test. So, what is this direct shear test? The objective of direct shear test is to determine the shearing strength of soil using direct shear apparatus. It is basically to measure immediate or short term shear strength of soil in terms of total stress. So, the two main components of direct shear test basically, we have this direct shear loading frame and you have this direct shear box apparatus later i'm going to show to you how to prepare this direct shear box apparatus okay but before that let me show to you the detail about this direct shear loading frame machine okay this is direct shear loading frame so the main principle in direction test is that say if you have this one sample of soil you're going to shear this soil until it's filled so how are you going to do that basically you're going to apply a horizontal force and by applying horizontal force at that particular soil sample so you can actually try to create a shear planes within that shear planes you're going to test what is the maximum shear strength of that particular soil. Okay, so that soil basically you're going to place in here. So I can show in here. This is the place that you're going to put the shear box apparatus. After this, Mr. Zabidi is going to show to you how to actually to prepare the shear box apparatus. Okay, but before that, I'm going to show to you the anatomy of this direct shear loading frames okay and this is basically the motor that actually going to start or going to um, create that horizontal force that actually going to push that soil until it's filled okay and in here you have the load cells okay so these load cells basically they're going to measure the horizontal force that actually being um, applied from this motor okay and at the same time you also have in here a displacement transducer this displacement transducer mainly going to take the reading of horizontal displacements and at the same time you also have this one also another transducer displacement transducer this displacement transducer is actually for a vertical displacement transducer so from vertical displacement transducer you can actually see how is it the uh, vertical uh, changes of the soil especially if you want to look into the delicacy of the soil samples that are actually being shared during this uh, direct shear test and at the same time you have this Liver, which is the purpose is actually for you to put a weight okay so from this weight you can see that underneath in here okay you can have about one kilo two kilograms or ten kilograms the main purpose is actually to multiply the loads so for examples if you require a hundred kilograms of loads if this is based on the ratio of 1 to 10, so you don't actually need to put a 100 kilogram of loads. So you just need to put about 10 kilograms. So it is very, very convenient as well as it is very safety in the experimental setup. Okay, now we proceed into sample preparations. Before we can start to do the direct shear box test, we need to prepare the samples into the shear box. First, we need a soil sample, ladle, brush, veneer clipper, spatula, mallet hammer, and shear box. Okay, we're going to assemble the shear box. This is the standard size 100 mm by 100 mm shear box. 
we can start assembling the shear box by placing the upper shear box on top of the lower shear box then screw the clamping bolts then we place the base plate the base plate has connection slots at the bottom surface Next, place the grid plate. It, the grid plate has its groove. The groove direction must be perpendicular with the shear directions. How to know the shear direction from this shear box during shear box assemble? If you look into the shear box, there is a look like connection bolt at the side this will be connected to the direct shear loading frame motor where the pushing force to create shear will be applied Next, we need to determine the sample height. It must be from the top of base plate until the top part of shear box. Once the shear box already assembles, weigh the empty shear box. Next, place the soil sample inside the shear box in three layers and each layer need to be a smooth layer. You can also tamp the samples uniformly for each layer to ensure that there is no different density between each layer. Next, place the second layer as well as the third layer and ensure each layer is prepared smoothly with uniform density. Just like the first layer that you already prepared. After the sample prepare in the shear box, weigh the shear box together with the soil. Next, we're going to place the top grid plate similar to the bottom grid plate. The groove direction must be perpendicular with the shear direction. And finally, we place the loading pad. Next, we are going to place the shear box into the direct shear box loading frame.
Take out the share box camping bowl. If not, you're going to share the screw, not the soil. Place the normal load frame on top of the share box loading pad. Adjust the horizontal screw from loading frame to connect with the shear box. Next, we need to set the vertical displacement dial gauge. For vertical displacement, first need to adjust the dial gauge contact point plunge to be at the center. This is because during direction test, there is possibility the soil will go up or down due to soil delinquency. Soil delinquency is the volume change in granular materials during shear deformation. And next, we need to set the vertical displacement reading to zero. After that, set the horizontal displacement dial gauge and load ring dial gauge reading both at zero as well. Next, put the required weight for the test. In this example, we can put 10 kilograms of weight into the weight holder attached to the lever arm. Now, we can start this direct shear test. During the shearing stage, observe and record the reading in horizontal displacement as it governs by the shearing rate. In this test, we do 1 mm per minute. As the horizontal reading recorded, both vertical and load ring reading needs to be taken simultaneously. The reading will be continuously recorded until the reading in the load ring reduces. When the test already ended, stop the shearing. Release all the dial gauge and the weight at the normal load frame. Take the shoe box out from the load frame. Prepare 3 moisture content container and weight the container of the empty weight. Take the sample that already been sure for moisture content determination. Weight the sample and container weight. Place the sample in the oven for 24 hours for moisture content determination.